Welcome back, true biologists. We continue our look at cell structure with, this time, a look at the cytoskeleton. So this is going to be another mini-series um, with a number of episodes looking at the different cytoskeletal components. Why I see value in going a little bit beyond the textbook um, in terms of the cytoskeleton is that there are a number of points in the A-level specifications where things that involve the cytoskeleton are mentioned, but we don't really go into the detail of how those things work. And I thought that um, we might use this opportunity just to have a look at the, at the detailed um, structure and function of the different cytoskeletal components, how they link to cellular functions um, that are mentioned in other parts of the spec. For, for example, we have functions such as vesicle transport. Okay, so we've got vesicle uh, transport uh, when we looked at protein synthesis and the, uh, and the organelles involved in protein synthesis, vesicles that get transported from one part of the cell to another or one organelle to another. It happens along uh, or using the cytoskeletal uh, networks. So we have vesicle transport. We also have uh, important involvement of the cytoskeleton in cell division. So during cell division, we have the process of uh, chromosome segregation. Segregation, so making sure that the chromosomes are pulled to the opposite poles of the cell, that is dependent on uh, cytoskeletal involvement. Also, cytokinesis, so the splitting of the cell um, or the splitting of the cytoplasm of the two of the cell to form two new cells, cytokinesis also involves the cytoskeleton. Um, when we look at phagocytes, so the uh, cells or as part of the immune response, we have phagocytes. Now, phagocytes are mo motile cells. They move throughout the body. They might be uh, moving towards toxins released by uh, pathogens um, and then engulfing them, carrying out phagocytosis to uh, neutralize that danger. So phagocytes need to be able to move. Now, movement of cells involves the cytoskeleton. Um, in order to carry out phagocytosis, cells need to extend their membrane uh, around the pathogen uh, in order to do that. So phagocytosis is dependent on the cytoskeleton. We also have things like muscle contraction. Uh, muscle contraction. Uh, actin, myosin, that sarcomere structure is uh, a specialized cytoskeleton. Um, so muscle contraction, we're thinking it specifically about the sarcomere. Now depending, I don't know whether you've covered any of these topics yet, maybe you're in an early part of your uh, progress through the specification, but these are all things that will come up or have come up in your journey through biology involving the cytoskeleton and this video or series of videos is going to look at the cytoskeletal components that are involved in these processes, their structure and how just a quick brief look at how they how those cytoskeletal components achieve these functions. Right so now let's look over here at the components of the cytoskeleton. This is not just a pretty confusing diagram but it is in fact a summary of the key components that we are going to look at. First one, so we'll, we'll look at these in order of size. In red, we have the filamentous, filamentous actin network. This is also called the uh, microfilaments. Microfilaments, okay. Um, and you usually find these near the periphery of the cell because the, the, one of the main roles of actin is to push or pull on the cell membrane in order to generate sh cell shape changes. 
Next, we have in blue, in blue, we have, so partly in the nucleus and also in the cytoplasm, we have the intermediate filaments. intermediate filaments. So let's just roughly look at the size of these things. So the filament, actin filaments are roughly uh, eight nanometers in width. So they're the smallest in width of all the filaments. The intermediate filaments are about 10 nanometers in width. Now uh, the intermediate filaments are, yeah, there's a little bit in the nucleus and in the cytoplasm. And finally, uh, we also have in green the microtubules. Not super helpful in terms of the name because they they are the thickest of the cytoskeletal elements that we'll be looking at. So there they are, the microtubule network. Okay, and the microtubule network. So the, these filaments are about twenty-five nanometers in width. Okay, so you have small, bigger biggest all right now we'll, we'll stick with this color scheme um, usually these elements are shown by um, confocal laser scanning confocal microscopy to to so the the different elements are labeled and red usually it's the red fluorescence that indicates the uh, filamentous actin network the green fluorescent labels indicate the uh, microtubule network and the intermediate filament blue now, what do these elements have in common? Well, all the cytoskeletal networks that we talk about, the, the red, the effectin, the, um, the intermediate filaments and the microtubules, they're all essentially made of specific proteins. So one specific protein makes up the F-actin uh, filaments, another protein makes up the intermediate filaments, and another protein makes up the microtubules in simplistic terms. So specific proteins make up each network. Each filament, so the filaments, the filaments are formed by the end-to-end -end joining of these proteins. Okay, so filaments are formed from the end-to-end. -end. Let's call it association. Okay the end-to-end -end association of the protein subunits okay so it's you could think of it like this giant uh, quaternary structure where individual proteins have to come together associate with each other non-covalently um, in order to perform their function it's just that this quaternary structure instead of having four uh, um, subunits like maybe uh, hemoglobin does uh, there's many hundreds many thousands okay so proteins are making up these filaments the filaments are formed by the end-to-end -end joining of the proteins and the next key point is that all of these filaments or all of these structures are dynamic okay um, that means that they they are not static in time and space they are constantly being made they are being broken down they are possibly made in one part of the cell as the requirements of the cell are and they are being um, repositioned in other places so the dy their dynamic nature is very important in terms of formation and um, degradation So both of these are important in their function. Um, so not like static structures, not, not literally like a skeleton. Okay. Um, finally, that, that, that dynamic nature means that these structures can be regulated. The, the dynamic nature means that these structures can be regulated. So if we're thinking about a cell, um, let's say it's the cell is about to go into um, mitosis. 
Well, mitosis requires a specific reorganization of the cytoskeleton to allow mitosis to occur. A situation, or maybe this cell has to suddenly move towards bacterium. So the bacterium must, might be releasing certain chemicals. So this cell is now responding to its external environment reorganizing its cytoskeleton within the cell to allow it to respond to that extracellular signal and move towards the source of that signal. Okay, so internal and external signaling regulates the cytoskeleton and that's a very important part of the ability of the cell to respond appropriately to its life cycle or to its uh, external signals that it might receive. So regulated is very important and the, one of the main ways that the cytoskeleton is regulated is by having binding proteins. So um, we've discussed that um, all these cytoskeletal networks individually are made up of specific proteins, but those proteins don't work in isolation. A, a wide variety of other proteins bind to these networks, modifying their behavior, sometimes causing their formation, sometimes enhancing their degradation, sometimes rearranging them to form different structures that do different things. So uh, the ability of these cytoskeletal networks to be regulated occurs through the presence of these binding proteins the binding proteins being affected by various signaling events that are happening in the cell. Okay, so those are the key things that are common to all of the cytoskeletal elements. So now let us look in turn in detail at the different cytoskeletal components in terms of their structure and their function.